Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Fee and this is Money Philosophy. Thank you for coming back for another day of Tesla analysis. Um, I know once again, I have not been posting videos regularly uh, between losing my voice and my audio problem. I have been a little bit uh, slow in the last few weeks, but I am back now um, and I hope that uh, you will continue to enjoy my Tesla analysis. Occasionally, I will add Shopify and Amazon as well as Nvidia and some other stock in the back of the video. So if you're interested uh, definitely check those out. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I am a growth stock investor and a trader, and I'd love to share with you my investing and trading journeys. On a related note, I am putting together a trading mentorship package that I will be make it available to all of you shortly here. I have been receiving increase um, for trade mentorship and coaching, and I'd love to share with you uh, my thought process, my chart reading, as well as how I can make a successful trade. I usually don't provide trade signals um, on my Patreon page though. However, I do share uh, occasionally when I spot a really good pattern, and I will share with you in writing what I I want to do um, the entry and the exit point so that you can manage your trade accordingly. So feel free to join me on Patreon page as well. Without further ado, let's get right into the analysis for today. So as usual, we'll start with the daily chart here. Um, as you can see, the daily chart looks pretty bearish. Um, right now, Tesla seems to have a double top on the daily with um, this being the first top and this being the second top. Um, the RSI also moving down as Tesla made a double top. So I do think that the downside could be a little bit steep going from here. The first destination would be 1044, which it almost getting there today. Um, and then you can see um, 945 being the next destination, um, as well as 931. 931 right now is a 50 days SMA, which is the dotted line right here. So I think the Tesla retracing back to 50 days SMA uh, seems to be an essential step before it could decide where to move further. Keep in mind that we do have Q4 delivery result coming up in about a month and a week. Um, we also have Q4 financials as well as the entire 2021 financials coming out. So the correction would not be long. However, it could be steep which could result in a lot of loss for investors, especially if you just recently got into Tesla. Going into the hourly chart here. Um, so as you can see, uh, it is a very steep correction today. I venture to say that Elon Musk uh, might be selling some shares today. The RSI on the hourly chart, however, seems to signal a divergence. So while price action is going down, RSI is flat. So there is a good chance Tesla will bounce in the morning. Yesterday high was about 1200. Tesla today's high was about 1179. Um, so it still could not reach yesterday's high. The pivot points uh, on the high point would have been 1232 if Tesla continued its momentum from yesterday. Um, the middle pivot point for today was 1163 and the bottom pivot point is 1126. Uh, it is obviously irrelevant now that Tesla moved all the way down past all of these pivot points. Now it is reaching for the next strong support 1044 and potentially 949. Um, also for perspective, 931 is in the middle of the gap that I keep saying time and again, 949 to 909. There is a gap there of $40, 931, which is 50 days SMA, uh, sit in between the two points of the gap. So it's possible that Tesla could get there. But for now, I think Tesla could stop at 1044 and potentially bounce tomorrow, given the RSI divergence here. At the time of this recording, it is uh, 10 minutes to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we still have over two hours to go for the trading day. It is possible the Tesla could reverse, especially when I see the RSI divergence on the hourly here. The volume right now is 75%, which is about average, I would say. By the end of the day, Tesla will probably get close to about 100%. Um, so when Tesla moved down about 7% here or more by the end of the day, and the volume is around 100%, the bearish move is significant and probably fueled by the fact that Elon is selling additional shares. 
Now, there are a lot of rumors about a possible stock split in Tesla, and while I think it is entirely possible, I don't think it is very probable at this point, and I understand the December 9th uh, reading and analysis. Um, I'm very much interested in learning and listening to all these analyses. However, I think that a stock split needs an approval from the board or at least an endorsement from the board. Even if the board is all for it, um, I think that it's necessary to run the idea by the board before announcing to the public, right? And I think we have uh, just about over two weeks for all of that to happen. Uh, I think it's a little bit rushed, but keep in mind that at Tesla, everything moves really fast, so it is entirely possible. I just don't think it's very probable at this point. Um, I would not make any trade based on this rumor on December 9th stock split. However, I will still look at chart and take it day by day. The trading range for tomorrow on the upper end is 1150. The middle pivot point right now is 1107 and the bottom pivot point is a 991. Um, so keep in mind that 990 or 991 is already very close to 949 here. It is also the previous low um, from a couple of weeks ago. Tesla get to about 978 um, last week. So it is possible that it revisit that low, which happens to be around the pivot point here, and then bounce. But I do think that given the RSI divergence here, I think it probably will reverse in the back uh, half of the day or the last two hours of the day. And then tomorrow it could spike up before continue the downtrend. Looking again at the hourly chart here, as you can see that uh, Tesla has a very steep correction the last couple of weeks start bouncing up and it did make um, multiple bottom here at around $1,000. It held that support pretty well. So let's see if it could hold that support again. Um, if Tesla gets to about um, 1000 give or take and then bounce that could be a mini inverse head and shoulder with this is a shoulder this is a head and a potential uh, shoulder over here at around $1000 um, so that could be a catalyst for it to spike further but that is only a speculation at this point Tesla first need to get to 1000 and bounce before that theory um, to stay intact uh, as of right now, I'm looking to make sure Tesla holds the previous support at around $1,011. The next support would be $989. If Tesla uh, moved down past these two supports, then the next one would be $949. Uh, as an investor, I'm super excited for this opportunity to buy more Tesla shares. Um, I'm buying with every spare cent that I have here. Um, I don't think that it matters what price point that you enter. If you think the stock will go to 3000 4000 6000 or even um, uh, 7000 in the future. Uh, Stephen Mark Grind also uh, reacted to an interview of a former Tesla employee who believed that Tesla could be worth a million dollars in the future. So uh, if that is the case, a thousand dollars is very cheap. So uh, it doesn't matter if you enter at eleven hundred dollars, twelve hundred dollars or one thousand dollars or below one thousand dollars for that matter. I'm personally buying today and I hope that some of you investors out there will do the same. As far as trading right now, I don't necessarily have any position and I don't encourage um, entering a trade right now unless you want to enter a put option. Put option is a decent bet given the bearish trend today, but keep in mind that Tesla could bounce in the morning before moving back down. So if it does bounce, that would be a much better point to enter put option if you want to um, trade or hedge your portfolio. I personally would wait until Tesla get to about 949 or at least the first point would be 990 uh, before I consider a call option. Um, and, and if that's the case, I would be looking out a few months out, possibly February, March 2022, uh, in order to capitalize on Q4 delivery result as well as Q4 earnings. Um, I might even contemplate a leap call option once again if Tesla filled the gap and get to 909 for whatever reason, which is about $180 from here, um, then I could potentially consider a leap call option as well. Uh, but for right now, you're looking at this chart and you see a prominent double top here. Um, I think the downside would be more likely than the upside. Uh, of course, Elon can stop selling shares and everybody can resume buying. Let's take the opportunity to talk about Amazon. Uh, Amazon had a bullish run last Thursday on November 18. 
Um, and then it went to its all, almost all time high um, at 37.62 on November 19 before retracing back. So this is a very uh, interesting move here um, that seems to signal a topping candle with a failed rocket launch on top, also reaching almost at the resistance point and then retrace. Uh, sure enough, on Monday it moved down and then today um, is a continuation of that bearish move from yesterday. Uh, this is interesting because usually leading into uh, Black Friday, which is this coming Friday, uh, Amazon usually spike up big time and then sell off on Black Friday. Uh, this is definitely an experience that I haven't seen um, the last few years that I noticed with Amazon it has been going up on the week of Thanksgiving. That said, I think the reappointment of Jerome Powell uh, did fuel the tech stock sell off um, when he signals a potential interest rate increase in the near future. I think that's every reason why tech stock stock valuation will be lower today and hence the sell-off. Um, so after Jerome Powell was announced to be reappointed, I think bond yield uh, skyrocketed, which resulted in the immediate sell-off in a NASDAQ. Um, and Amazon necessarily follow. Amazon sold off not as deep as Shopify, but it certainly sold off. Um, and uh, today was a continuation. The current support point for Amazon is 35.30, which also happens to be the low point of the day today. Uh, the next support point should be right around 34.75 and then 34.09, which right now is 50 days SMA. Um, I don't know if Amazon could get that low from now until Friday. I personally think that it would bounce at some point and would not get to 3409. Um, so 3530 was a really good support point that it bounced from and hopefully it could um, reverse tomorrow and gain some traction into Black Friday. Um, as usual, um, if you do trade Amazon, just know that Amazon is super volatile. Um, it also moved very quickly. So you could gain a lot, but you could also suffer if the stock doesn't move your way. Let's take a look at the hourly chart on Amazon here. The pivot point for tomorrow would be on the upper end, 36.05. Middle pivot point would be 35.65. And the bottom pivot point is 34.73. Um, if you look at the hourly chart here, you notice this is a head and shoulder pattern, which is playing out right now. Amazon is in consolidation zone uh, between 35 30 and 35.85 is brief yes consolidation zone. So hopefully it will consolidate here before bouncing. But if it does break 35.30, that is very bad news for the bulls. I think it will head straight down to 34.78 and then 34.09, which is uh, 50 days SMA. And from here, uh, 200 days SMA is 33.46, which is not too far below 50 days SMA. Um, the upper end of my weekly bull flat right now stand at 33.82. Um, so as long as Amazon stay above 33.82 for the next few weeks, the bull flag is still intact. Um, I still look at the overall bullish trend in Amazon on the weekly. Um, and I do think that the uh, medium term price target would be 39.50. However, if you look at the weekly candle right now, this candle is very much a reversal candle, so it's not a good candle. It also have a double top here, which is also pretty uh, dangerous um, because the stock could move to the downside very uh, quickly from here. Um, Amazon could sell off big time. Uh, right now, however, um, it is supposed to have a really good Black Friday, so I think that it probably contain at around this level and maybe it could bounce a little bit going into next week um, and then we will see what um, the beginning of December will bring. Uh, if you want to trade Amazon, I would definitely wait for um, the stock to revisit 3530 and then we can take a call option um, to make it back to all time high, but I would probably do three to four weeks out if you can afford it. Um, same week expiration for Amazon is always very risky. A few of you asked me to look at Lucid. Um, LCID is the ticker symbol. I haven't researched Lucid much on the fundamental side, um, aside from knowing that it incurred a loss in the recent uh, quarterly result. Um, I don't know much about the company. I know of the car and I don't necessarily feel like I'm a big fan of the look or the price of the car for that matter. It has its own audience, no doubt, but it's not going to attract the millennial um, consumers out there. Um, so it's definitely not the car for me, uh, both from 
look perspective and price perspective, uh, but it could be a decent car, right? I, I just, I'm just not a fan of it. Um, as far as the, the stock and the technical analysis here, uh, this pattern is interesting because it could signify one of two things, which unfortunately are the exact opposite of one another. Uh, one thing could be a t double top, so it could get back to about $60 range and then fall back down. And if that's the case, that is a double top and it could fall back down to about $17 as a strong support. However, this could also signal a cup and handle. So if Lucid move back down a little bit, down to about $30, $40, and go back up to about $60, that is a cup and handle pattern, and that's extremely bullish. Right now, I'm looking at the weekly chart. So just so you know, it depends on where Lucid will go from here. Um, I would probably err on the bullish side, than bearish, even though uh, that is just strictly technical analysis, right? On the earnings, I don't think it is necessarily a great reason to celebrate, and Lucid has a lot to prove itself. It hasn't scaled production. It hasn't done anything that could signal sustainable uh, volume production in the future. Um, however, it is definitely a decent play if it does pull a cup and handle. So in the next few weeks, if it gets down to, once again, around $40, and can move back up to about $56 to $60. That is a cup and handle pattern, and it could be a catalyst to spike further. But if it go back down to about $28, $29 here in the next few weeks, that is a double top, and it could go all the way back down to $10. But I think the first destination would be $17 to $18, which is a very strong support based on this weekly chart. Um, on the daily chart, um, we can see that Lucid almost had a uh, death cross a few weeks ago, right around September, it did not move all the way down. So the 50 days SMA, the white line here, moved back up uh, above the 200 days SMA, making a golden cross again, and Lucid resumed bullish here, leading into earnings, even though earnings wasn't that great, um, it continued to be very bullish. Um, I think this means that the market seems to think that, hey, aside from the volume production issue that Lucid has, which to me is a very big issue, Lucid probably has a good runway for the next few months or years, um, and that's why people want to invest in Lucid. Uh, quite frankly, you don't really have a whole lot of EV players out there that is credible enough for you to invest in. Um, so aside from Tesla, Lucid, and Rivian, um, there's not a whole lot out there that you can look into. I do think that Lucid um, can be successful. It has been um, providing a decent model. It probably attracts different type of audience from the Tesla fans and consumers, but it needs to scale up fast and meet uh, customer demands faster in order to gain more traction and build loyalty that way. Um, so Lucid is not a company I'm interested in investing. It is definitely a potential good trade. Uh, but for right now, aside from the fact that it is currently bullish, um, there's not much that I can say from this chart pattern. So this is it for this video. I hope you find the information helpful. As always, comment down below if you would like me to add any other stock. Um, I will do my best to add them for you guys. As always, comment down below um, with your thoughts and feedback. I always appreciate you guys, your support and your feedback. Um, thank you again for being with the channel thus far. I'm coming up on my 10th month anniversary on this channel, and I really appreciate all of you guys. Uh, once again, thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.